Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. Well, here we go again with my addiction. Home Assistant with CCTV Cameras. Recently on Facebook Marketplace, I found a DCS-6510 day and night vandal proof fixed dome network camera. I just had to have it. So here it is. Now I have to figure out how to hook it up and make it work with Home Assistant. So follow me along as I try to struggle with this and get it running. Here we go. And now the moment I've been waiting for, the unboxing. It's in a secure box. Open it up. It's got some paperwork, a couple of CDs. First CD is a day and night Randall proof fixed dome network camera. It's a business class networking. Some paperwork about the GNU license. Another CD which has the D-Link camera setup on it. So we're going to need that one. Another piece of paper which really doesn't matter. It's just about their product. And finally, the quick install guide. We are going to need that. It explains what to do to set it up initially. It shows all the different cable sets, including the uh, BNC connector and all those others. That's the Vandal Proof Fixed Dome Camera Quick Install. Here comes the unit. Now, the unit's pretty heavy. It's in a good cardboard box wrapped in a plastic bag from the previous owner. Taking it out, it's quite heavy, solidly built. You can see on the back it's got a cable set that comes through and then we've got your power, BNC, uh, Ethernet cable. There's also some cables there for 24 volt power if you've got an emergency power line running in your home or your business. Now it comes with uh, 12 volt input power as well as using PoE. You cannot use them both at the same time. There's the uh, product information. And that's pretty much it. It's a good, solid feeling unit. I hope the camera quality is as good as the physical build. It's quite good. You can see the IR uh, LEDs there. And that's about it. Now there is a little side box here. Inside the side box, we're hopefully going to find some more items. I'm thinking there's probably going to be a power supply in there. And it's a pretty well secured box. And I'm going to tear the tab off in a second. There we go. There's the power supply. 12 volt power supply plugs into the female adapter. And in the other side, after a little bit of a struggle, it is awesome toolkit, a little Torx driver. Not sure why they included that, but uh, I guess it's nice to have. So there you see it. Nothing too exciting, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, but I'm pretty excited about getting it set up. So the next step is to put in the CD and set it up. After the reboot, here's what we've got. It's a simple login. Click OK and it comes into this console window. Clicking on the setup, go into settings and camera, search. There's our camera. Now we can set a username and a password and I'm assuming that we can also change the IP address because I use uh, dedicated IP addresses for my cameras. And so far, so easy. So I'm going to set it up to a predefined IP address, which is known as a static IP address, and then we'll come back to the video. After we've configured the camera for a static IP address, we have to set up the camera.yaml file within Home Assistant. In this one, what we're doing is we're creating um, an entity. It's called D-Link Camera 7 in this case. Uh, we're using a still image URL as well as a stream source. Notice you have to put the password and the uh, username in both. I'm using a generic password there. You could set something up for yourself. Once this is configured and you reset uh, or restarted Home Assistant, it will be create an entity called D-Link Camera 7 as a camera. Then you can attach it to Lovelace. And Lovelace is set up this way. We've got uh, a picture glance card and it just refers to camera.dlink7 and once it's installed just do refresh the screen and bingo we've got a new glance card which is active when you click on it it gives you a live video once we have configured the camera.yaml and the ui underscore lovelace.yaml files we end up with something like this this is my opening page for the main floor and you can see I've got a couple of cameras defined as my CCTV. If we take a look at the DCS 6510, which we've just installed, clicking on it will give us a live action view. 
And if I turn this camera right now, it's looking at the ceiling. Now it's looking at the computer monitor and you can see that it's a fast response, good quality video, and I'm pretty happy with it. So it looks like we've got it all set up within Home Assistant. Now that we've created the static IP address for the camera, we've included it in camera.yaml so that we've got an entity created. We also have a card created within the UI underscore Lovelace interface. I use MotionEye for my NVR, which is a network video recorder. In order to set that up, you just click on Add Camera, and then here is what your settings would be. You're going to use RTSP, the username and password that you've set up, and then you select a drop down on the camera for RTSP TCP camera. Once that's done, it gives you a feed within MotionEye, and then you can set up all the motion and other parameters within the NVR software. Motion I records all the files to the Home Assistant hard drive and it is located in the root share Motion I directory and under that you will find all your cameras. In this instance I'm using camera 7 and all the files will be there. If you ever have a requirement to review these videos they are in this directory of root share Motion I and in this case camera 7. Remember this directory will get fairly large because it's containing all the videos and snapshots from the motions of all the cameras. So you may have to uh, do a little bit of a purge every once in a while. Well that wraps up my DCS 6510 adventure. I love having an obsession for technology when I can buy it cheap. In this case I paid $55 for a camera that was worth about $500 Canadian. Yes it's a couple of years old but it still works and it's great for what I have it in mind for. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, I'd like you to consider clicking the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Wow, you're still watching. So, here comes a little bit of an extra bonus. What is PoE, you might ask? Well, it's not Edgar Allan Poe. PoE, or Power Over Ethernet, is a technology that lets network cables carry electrical power. This power can be provided through a PoE switch, which is a switch that provides power to the end device. If you're using a switch that does not contain PoE, then you can use a PoE injector. Sometimes this is called a mid-span device. Either way, this PoE injection or provision from the switch provides DC power to the end device, which allows it to be powered up without having an electrical outlet handy. This is great for CCTV cameras and other devices such as IP phones. Hope you enjoyed the bonus. Thanks!